How did we get iPods? How did they come into being? You can't really make a movie on an entire underappreciated, understaffed, underpaid R&D department in a company. So we're gonna tell you the story of the guy who employed him, because that's, that's easier. Jobs. So Jobs is a biographical picture of the life of Steve Jobs. Innovator, genius, taskmaster, asshole, CEO, whatever you want to call him, he's the guy who created Apple and he was a big influence of all the cool tech you love today. Or at least a lot of it. And Ashton Kutcher plays Steve Jobs. I'm not going to say he's like Leonardo DiCaprio as Howard Hughes or Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman or Daniel Day-Lewis as Lincoln, but I will say he was good as Steve Jobs. He had a lot of the Steve Jobs mannerisms down. You know that frumpy walk that he always did? Kutcher nailed that. When he's walking, you're like, that's totally Steve Jobs. So this performance may be one small step in the entirety of roles ever portrayed by actors, but this is one giant leap for Ashton Kutcher, so he deserves props for this. Other than that, this is the life of Steve Jobs, the guy who made Apple. So you have some expectations. There are things you want to see in this movie because you've heard so many stories. You're like, I want to see that. I want to see that. Do you get it? Not really. As a biographical picture, it's fine. It's informative. It's a fictionalized portrayal of a guy's life. I love seeing leaders of industry do their thing. So when he's cracking down and he's just coming up with these ideas, I love seeing it. I'm like, dude, that guy was crazy. He asked the impossible. He expected the impossible and they all went to work to create the impossible. That's really, really cool to see. I'm just saying I wanted the movie to have a stronger script. I'm probably gonna compare this movie mentally to The Social Network a lot. Whether or not that's fair, I'm not sure. I don't see why it's unfair. But I was watching Jobs and I was like, how much better would this movie have been if it was written by Aaron Sorkin? The writer of The Social Network in the newsroom, you feel like Sorkin has a really good way about having character dialogue completely make the movie. And in a movie like this, that can be all the difference in the world. But in the end, you're just kind of seeing Steve Jobs do things with Apple and you're like, oh, okay, well, he's... He's doing his thing. Example, the dude created a company. There was a lot of conflict in there. Then you have Apple versus Microsoft, which let's face it, that is a war that's going on today. Mac versus PC is like the Nintendo versus Sega of the modern age. And that conflict is in the movie. What is the conflict? It's one phone call. Ashton Kutcher, Steve Jobs is on the phone and he's yelling at what I imagine is Bill Gates' answering machine because you don't actually see the dialogue. It's just him screaming in a phone. Then he slams the phone down. That's all you see of that conflict. Steve Jobs feels like his code was blatantly ripped off from him. The entire conflict, one phone call. That sucks, come on, I wanted to see more of that. There's actually a little conflict in the movie. I'm not saying there's not conflict. I'm just saying you were never at the edge of your seat going, I hope he gets through this. The movie is a series of situational circumstances that are all lined up and Ashton Kutcher as Steve Jobs is going through the movie until the end of the movie and then the movie's done. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I was informed now. I feel like I could have seen a two hour biography on the History Channel about Steve Jobs, been just as entertained, possibly more entertained because it's actually the facts, it's all real, it's not fictionalized or anything, walked out of that, had the same feeling. I will give Jobs half props in the sense that I was afraid that they were going to make Steve Jobs this great guy and he was never an asshole. Although we have all heard the stories about how the guy was like hardcore, like old school James Cameron asshole. And it does show that and I was glad they showed that. I'm like, okay, they're not sugarcoating it. They are showing that this guy was so ambitious that he came across as a dick sometimes. However, they showed so much of that that you're like, all right, was he just unlikable? I gotta think it wasn't totally like that. So they swung so far the other way, I imagine, to appease people who were afraid that they were gonna make him out to be this great guy when he was an asshole sometimes, that they just went full asshole. And it's like, okay, there's somewhere in the middle that you're supposed to be. In the end, Jobs was interesting. If you're interested in tech, like if you're an Apple fan and you're a Steve Jobs fanatic, you're gonna wanna watch Jobs. But I feel like a great movie and even a really good movie will have someone go into it who really uninterested in the subject and come out going, I am so interested in the subject. I am jumping on Wikipedia right now. I'm Googling this situation and this person. I want to find out so much about him. I didn't really do that. I felt like, well, if you're an Apple fan, a Steve Jobs fan, you're going to like Jobs. If you don't care about either, you're not going to care about this movie. You walk out as indifferent as you are when you walk in. So I can't say, yeah, you got to see Jobs right now. I'll say it's a good time. No alcohol required if you're a Steve Jobs fanatic. Otherwise, Jobs is a good time if you're drunk. Yeah, now is a party. So innovators, who is your favorite innovator of all time? We're talking all time. If you know the name of the person who painted the first cave paintings, name that person. We're talking innovators of all time. Whoever it is, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.